to order, and I ask you to please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, at the uh, opening of each meeting, we have a hearing of visitors. This is the public's opportunity to have up to three minutes to address the school committee, the superintendent, and the mayor. We have uh, one visitor who has signed up to speak tonight, Michelle Allen. Michelle, can you talk into the mic? There we go. I just I can't hear you. Okay, go ahead. My daughter um, actually having teachers um, absent out of class without a sub. Um, to date, as far as December 16th, she's missed 11 hours of one class and 8.8 .8 hours of another class. During these hours that she has missed, she has been sitting in a school cafeteria with um, no instructional learning whatsoever. Um, I've, this is my sixth child going through the Brockton High School. Um, I've never had a complaint, and they've worked, always worked with me if there was, was an issue. Um, I do not re think this reflects Brockton High School. But at this time, I feel Brockton High School is failing my student, who is experiencing her last year as a senior and not getting the education promised to her, um, according to the Massachusetts Department of Education, which she, she is supposed to be entitled to 990 hours of education. And so far, um, you know, I'm just talking about my daughter. I don't know how big the classroom is, but say there's 20, and I think that's probably on a low side, um, 20 students in that one class of 11 hours. That's 220 hours that has not been met by Brockton High School. Um, you know, my, my daughter has been here 100% for the school this year, no absences. Um, to have 10% of a classroom hours missed is, should not be acceptable. I'm not, I don't think parents realize what's going on. I was shocked um, to receiving so many phone calls from my daughter saying, I signed out teacher absent without a sub. And I've been hearing this a lot this year. Uh, you know, I know, the, the, I know that um, there's a policy that if children are absent four times, they fail automatically. What happens when there's a teacher who's absent more than four times a semester? And I have to question how my daughter is passing these, th this classroom or these classrooms when the hours are not there for her. Like I said, um, I, don't think it, I don't think it's fair to her. I don't think it's fair to the teachers. 
and I don't know what the next step is. I've talked to the assistant housemaster. I've talked to I've talked to the um, housemaster. Um, I don't seem to be getting anywhere. I've heard, yep, she's hit a bad run. She got the, the you know she got the teachers that have been absent a lot. You're failing my student, and especially in her last year. You know she's your typical. You know, student, first couple of times, yay, no, ab no teacher, you know, today. Now she's frustrated and she's aggravated and she's wondering, you know, uh, what am I learning this year so far? And um, like I said, I don't know what the next step is, um, but I'm going to ask and maybe put it to thought, should more parents be involved? How far should this go? How far does it need to go to get a response and to get something in place to change this? Because she deserves an education like all the students here. And I want that for them. We're, we're promised that. She's promised that. And, it, and I think this is why we have the, the Massachusetts Department of Education um, policies and they're not being met. Um, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And um, I hope things can be worked out, you know, um, especially for the students. Thank you, Michelle. Thank um, you. During hearing a visit, there's just no uh, immediate response from the school committee. They take all matters under advisement. Uh, but the superintendent, I do believe, intends to address this topic during a report on learning and teaching just a little bit later in the meeting. Okay? All right. Um, before we uh, get into the agenda, um, I, I do want to ask uh, if we could, um, I, I want to remember this evening a, a good man who we lost uh, overnight. Uh, Richard Sergi passed away last evening. I was notified this morning. and. Uh, I think many of us here in the room knew Richard very well. He was a, a gentleman in every sense of the word. He cared deeply about the city of Brockton. He was the person who was always willing to help others. Uh, he was always very helpful to me many, many times over the years. And I think it would be appropriate to remember him for a minute here because those who've known him for a while realize that long before he was the um, head of the Brockton Housing Authority, he was a teacher for many years here in the city. So I'd like to ask everyone just for a moment of silence, please, in memory of Richard Sergi. Thank you. All right, we have the consent agenda as the um, manner in which the school committee handles matters of routine business as a block in order to expedite the meeting. However, any individual school committee member may request that an item be removed from the consent agenda for individual discussion uh, if they so choose. So everyone has the consent agenda in front of them. Do uh, any members of the committee request to remove an item? No, well, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion on the consent agenda as a whole. Motion has been made and properly seconded to improve the entire consent agenda. All in favor? Opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, we will now go to the report of the superintendent of schools. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm so pleased this evening, and, and I know we're in a long line of recognition and accolades for somebody that the Brockton Public School has certainly known well for over the past 20 years, and that is Leo McNeil uh, from Harbor One, who has been more than uh, a friend to the Brockton Public Schools, to our students, to their families. Uh, and you know, I'd, I'd like to share again, um, I, I've known Leo going back to my community school days and there was not a time that we didn't ask for support or help or advice or you know, Harbor One was certainly always open to, to working with us and collaborating and Leo was always the first name that came to mind. That was always my first phone call and you know, I can't thank him enough as he goes into his retirement. But I would like to uh, invite up Ellen Cully and uh, Sarah Richards, who would like to share with us uh, some poignant moments and certainly collaboration uh, 
in a very special way with the Brockton Public Schools over these many years. Hello, my name is Alan Cully and I'm the Director of Business, Career and Technology at Brockton High School. It's an honor to be here tonight and talk about Leo. Um, Leo and Harbor One brought the Credit for Life Fair to Brockton and over the last 14 years he has educated thousands of our students in financial literacy. Leo worked with the Commonwealth of Massachusetts Treasurer's, uh, Treasurer's Office to create a toolkit for educators wishing to develop their Credit for Life Fair in school districts across the Commonwealth. That toolkit is now available online for all school districts. Leo is passionate and the ultimate professional. His kindness, attention to detail, and helpful nature makes working with him a pleasure. That man is on top of everything that is going on. He organizes and coordinates meetings, and he loves meetings, with all parties involved to make sure everything runs smoothly, and when Leo's running it, it does. Last year, the day before the fair started, he found out we were going to have torrential rains. Our students were going to walk from Brockton High School to the Shaw Center, so he ran out and bought 250 rain ponchos. He always has the best interest of our students at heart. During the actual fair, he is a one-man show. He watches everything and invents um, sales at other booths to alleviate long lines, and he makes up the most bizarre sales, and kids go running over to those booths to, to get those sales. He is constantly directing, every, and everyone falls whatever he says to a T because they know it works when he tells them what to do. He listens to student feedback and tries to incorporate their ideas the following year. He is a bond leader, and I personally will miss all his helpful advice. Leo, thank you so much for all the time you have spent preparing our students for the real world. I wish you a happy and fun-filled fun retirement. Good evening. My name is Sarah Richards. I'm the Director of Art. And it's my pleasure to be able to say a few words about Leo. Leo McNeil and Harbor One have sponsored the Harbor One Art Show for the last 29 years. The annual show is a true collaboration between the fine and applied art programs here at Brockton High. Harbor One has been the financial supporter for many years, um, and we're very appreciative of that. But we all know that without Leo and the role he's been in for so many years, the success and pride the show brings to the community would not be possible. Leo is a continuous supporter of the school system and particularly the arts. He loves and his love and appreciation of art, poetry, and literature is evident every year when he shares stories and poems in an effort to encourage and inspire our young artists. Every year he expresses his desire for our students to go beyond the expected and reach new heights. I often thought that in another life, Leo would make a great English teacher. And interestingly enough, Leo confirmed that in the Enterprise article that was in last night's paper. Leo not only takes time to speak at the awards ceremony every year, but he eagerly views the show and talks to our students about their artwork and their creative process. He shows a true interest in our students, what they think, and how they feel. In closing, I'd like to share a few inspirational quotes as Leo always did with our students. Do not go with the path where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Ralph Waldo Emerson. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things that you did not do than the, by the ones you did do. So throw off the bow lines, sail away from the safe harbor, catch the trade winds in your sails, explore, dream, discover. Mark Twain. My meaning simply is that whatever I've tried to do in life, I've tried with all my heart to do well. That whatever I've devoted myself to, I've devoted myself to completely. That in great aims and in small, I've always been thoroughly in earnest. Charles Dickinson. It's been our pleasure to collaborate with Leo all these years. We look forward to him visiting and viewing the show for years to come. We wish him well in his retirement. Thank you. Let's step up over here. I asked uh, Mr. Minicello, the vice chair, to join us also. Uh, so I've been out on the Leo McNeil circuit. I think this is about the eighth or ninth <laughs> award I've presented him. But none like this. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be the McNeil Tour 2014. Um, 
I do want to just real very quickly, Leo, say that uh, uh, to follow up on, on their comments that uh, you really brought to Knox Down Diabetes another great project of yours that's had a real positive impact on the city. I think you've been the social conscience of Harbor One for the past 20 years. And I think really what you've done with Harbor One is you've made them the model of what a good corporate citizen is in a city like Brockton uh, because Harbor One is always ready and willing to help us when, uh, when we need a hand. So it's my pleasure to present this to you, but I want to defer to Mr. Mancello also for a few remarks. Well, I just want to make sure everyone knows how much of a gentleman and a friend of the community Leo is and has been. Um, like Ellen said, the Credit for Life program for our students is such a, um, a real world um, initiation with regard to having a budget. Uh, the kids love it. They can't believe you know what it's like to live with a balanced checkbook. It. Uh, what it's like to pay bills. I think some of the kids walk out of that program and say, now I know what my parents go through every month. <laughs> yes, you do. Um, and not only does Leo do all of the things that we just said, but um, in terms of the community, the Brockton Symphony is a huge part of this community. And um, Leo, over the years, has been a huge help and supporter of that. Um, just a week, uh, a week and a half ago, uh, the symphony was over at West, and the South Middle School Choir was also a partner with the symphony. And, uh, you know, you just do a great job, Leo, and we just want to make sure you, you recognize the fact that we um, acknowledge what you do and we appreciate it. Um, the, the symphony was angelic even when they had you as the guest conductor. <laughs> yeah, uh, guest conductor. So yeah. you did a great job, and we really appreciate everything you've done for the schools, and like the mayor said, also for the city and the community at large. All right, well, I guess I get the distinction of reading the certificate of recognition. Uh, this is presented by the Brockton School Committee to Leo McNeil for his many years of tireless support for the students, staff, and parents of the Brockton Public Schools. His commitment to education has been the driving force behind many important programs that serve students' academic and artistic achievement and prepare them to be productive citizens. And this is signed jointly by the superintendent of schools, Kathleen Smith, and myself as the mayor of the city of Brockton, Bill Carpenter. It's my pleasure to present this to you, Leo. Thank you, Thank you so much for everything you've done for us. Thank you. Thank you. And more importantly, oh, this, ah. this is, this is yeah. your honorary Brockton ah. boxer official sweatshirt for you go. to wear, winter hat. Ah. So please wear Thank that you. proudly, and uh, nice. you'll always be a part of us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, that's. I'd like to say a couple words, yeah, please do. Please, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm glad Tom referred to the symphony because uh, uh, I was able to refer in my uh, uh, pre-conducting speech to uh, the film It's a Wonderful Life, which is traditionally played at this time of year and is one of America's most popular films. A lot of people don't recall that it's about a banker who cares for the community. And, uh, I enjoyed that reference thoroughly. Uh, in that movie, Jimmy Stewart, or George Bailey, as he was portrayed, uh, puts his life in peril by taking care of the community. Uh, I don't think I've had to do that because Harbor One has been a wonderful, generous supporter of my efforts. Uh, and I will go into Jim Blake's office and say, I've got this idea. and. Several times he will say, you go with it, and with his blessing and his money, we're able to do it. Uh, as for the Credit for Life Fair, uh, I, I have always been passionate about education. Uh, my wife, Marlene, was here, and how, how involved I was in that. And when I found that event, I knew it was a wonderful, effective educational tool. And here we are, going on 15 years, going on 3,000 students. Those students that started the first class are now in their 30s. Hopefully they're keeping their money safe and sound. And uh, it's a privilege. With the art show, uh, for a lot of reasons that I won't tell you with today, I have been in love, and Sarah mentioned it, with the humanities and art. And I think that gives you an empathy and an understanding for the needs of others. And uh, I've been blessed with that. So 
I want to thank the mayor, I want to thank Superintendent Smith, and I want to thank Tom. It's been a great privilege, and I hope I can continue that affiliation for many years to come. Thanks again. Thank, thank you, Leo. Thank you very much. Thanks, Leo. And I want to invite uh, our student speaker. I'm surprised you're here, Jess. I see you all get it out for tonight for the concert. So, so go ahead, all right. update us. Well, as everyone knows, tonight is our annual holiday concert. Um, it starts at seven o'clock. Um, it's tonight and tomorrow night. Tickets are $3 or $5 and $2 of the $5 ticket goes to Helping Hands. So make sure to come to our wonderful concert, seeing both choruses and both bands. Um, Ugly Sweater Day is actually turning into a contest is December 23rd at Brockton High School, so make sure you pull out your ugliest sweater possible. Um, the freshman and... I don't know. Our, the freshman class and sophomore class will be putting it on and all their proceeds go to um, the Project Guardian Angel, so make sure you pay your money in the morning to wear your great ugly sweater. Um, and yeah, that's what's happening at Brockton High. Well, thank you very much. And good luck mm -hmm. tonight and tomorrow night. And uh, we invite everybody to come to see a wonderful holiday show. And no snow, thank goodness. Um, also, uh, this evening, I um, well, well, let me let me address uh, before I bring up our uh, guest, uh, Corey Sullivan. Uh, I, I've known Michelle Allen for a long time. Uh, believe it or not, we had children that attended school together many years ago. I did not have an opportunity to contact her today. I know she had called my office. Um, and regardless of, of Michelle's phone call, it, this is something that uh, is ongoing during our executive team meeting today. We actually had a lengthy discussion uh, and we're still reviewing and, and let me preface this to it, talking about our substitute teachers and our substitute line item in the budget. As you recall yes, last year, uh, and I'm talking last spring with a very, very difficult budget, we were looking at teacher layoffs, employee layoffs, and one of the things we were desperately trying to do was to make sure that we had a teacher in every single classroom and could keep those class numbers down. In doing that, we took a budget for substitute teachers that was $1.4 million. Some of that, and this is what we're looking at this year, some of that is money for professional development, and we've been working on a system that tells us exactly professional development money, which is money that you count on to do training, possibly during the school day where you take some teachers out, but a substitute is there in the classroom uh, for that amount of time. The other part of the budget is a substitute budget which actually replaces a teacher out on illness. Could be bereavement, could be jury duty, could be um, not a professional development, but a professional day, part of the contract where they can visit another school or uh, another institution uh, involved with education. So as we have looked at this budget, we started out in September taking account because we were being very careful with a budget that was reduced to $500,000 and looking at it every month. And we've been sharing that with you during our finance subcommittee meetings as to where we're at. As we've watched it the past couple of months in trying to separate things, a decision that we made in the beginning was because we were so woefully lacking in monies for a substitute budget, our middle and our high schools, we put some permanent substitutes in those places to try to offset if we did not have substitute teachers. It's very, very difficult at our elementary school because you've got a teacher in a classroom, whereas middle school and high school, you can put students together, you hope, for a very short period of time if, in fact, you don't have substitute teachers to cover those classrooms. And again, I will tell you, it's a, it's a, a safety and security issue also if the numbers become larger than we would like for particular teachers being out at any one time. We have had, um, this past Friday at the high school, we had a large number of teachers out. You know illnesses have hit. Um, we've had you know, many different reports of the flu, and this includes our children, and it does affect many of our teachers. So today we sat down. Um, I'm asking Wanda to remind me tonight to set up after the holidays a finance subcommittee meeting. We need to look at this. I want to share with you uh, my prediction for the rest of the year and taking a look at our budget because I am possibly going to have to look at other monies or are making a request to, to get us through the rest of the year, but this is an issue we need to address because there are large numbers of students that have been in cafeterias, 
you know, during this unanticipated time. We're even looking and comparing to last year. And on a number of the days as we head into December, we're finding a larger amount of teachers that are out. And Mrs. Allen is correct. It becomes um, a, a class where there is no substitute and the children go to the cafeteria or a large area, you know, and it is treated as a study. So it is an issue. We need to address it. Um, I would like to, uh, again, propose that we look at this, look at the financial aspect of it, and come up with a solution. I'll make some recommendations to you, and I'd like to do that right after the holidays, but we're, we're working on this uh, as we speak. Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Minichel. When we have that subcommittee meeting, we can also have a little information or data about um, the frequency of certain not identifying the actual teachers, but we might need to prioritize and see which classrooms have been affected with respect to the hourly um, absence you know, that these kids are getting. So that if there are, if we can identify certain classrooms where, hey, there's already been you know three absences for a certain teacher, we know well we can't have that happen. We need to prioritize that spot as a sub-spot and or also look at the discipline that it is if, it, if it's you know a very complicated discipline that maybe we need to prioritize in terms of where and when substitutes are um, plugged in you know so a see you know how many frequencies a, a, a child or a teacher has been out you know you'll figure out very easily you know which kids are not you know, having teaching time, you know, more than others, and then be the, the difficulty of the discipline of the class. I mean, you know, it, there are certain classes that I think are more problematic where if a teacher is out, you know, if, you're, if your calculus teacher is out quite a bit, I mean, trying to catch up with that sort of sophistication rather than some other discipline. I'm not trying to minimize anything, no, but no. certain courses are a little more difficult than others. And having that lag time is going to, I think, affect. You know, we already have Deputy Superintendent Thomas has been working with the high school to identify and putting more permanent people in the high school mm -hmm. as subs so that they're there each day. Um, we also have Dr. Moran who has been uh, busy uh, putting together our substitute training that we do to continue to, you know, when we start to look at this, there are times when we are unable to get substitutes. And that's something that's been a problem regardless of the situation that we're dealing with with the budget right now. So we'll, we'll open up and deal with this on a number of issues and hopefully, as I said, we're, we're looking at it in, in very different ways right now. You know, some of it a budget lens, uh, others, you know, are, are we attracting enough subs, substitute teachers? Uh, Mr. Minichelli, you bring up a great point because we do have to look at those classes that w we would prioritize to make sure that there's substitute teachers there. Right, so it's scheduled a finance committee meeting for right after Christmas. Thank you very much. Um, also tonight, uh, I welcome uh, Corey Sullivan, who is uh, part of the U.S. Uh, Educational Delivery Institute. Uh, she's coming tonight to, with Deputy Superintendent Barry to do a presentation about our collaboration. She's going to update you on where we're at with our strategic plan. Uh, they'll be working with us possibly through the end of this year, and she'll share with you tonight um, what we hope to be able to share with you during that time. Great. Thank you so much, Superintendent Smith. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Corey Sullivan. I'm with the Education Delivery Institute. And I'm really pleased to be able to be here this evening to share with you some of the work we've already started here at Brockton um, and who we are, a little bit more about who we are and what our objectives are for this partnership. Um, so, go ahead. EDI uh, is a nonprofit organization. We're based down in DC, but we work across the country with education leaders um, at the state, district, and school level. Um, and we like to call ourselves the implementation experts. So our, our belief is that if you have a goal, which many education organizations do, you must have a plan to deliver on that goal, hence the name the Education Delivery Institute. Um, so we're all about getting results for students, whether it's in a school, a district, or a state. And as you can see here, we work uh, both on the K-12 side of that world, also on the higher education side, but always in pursuit of our mission, which is about building the capacity of education leaders to deliver on the plans that they've set for students. And so the way we do that is an approach called delivery, which I'm going to share a little bit more about. Um, but you'll note here that Massachusetts uh, is highlighted. We work at the department level at the state. 
um, but now are excited to begin this partnership here with Brockton at the district level. So the methodology we use for thinking about implementation is called delivery. Uh, it's, it's a little bit of a made up word in the way that we use it, but we believe it to be a systematic process through which system leaders can drive progress and deliver results. And you'll see that these four questions here seem rather simple at first glance, uh, but we actually believe that when you get into answering them, it becomes a lot harder than you thought. And so our job is to help system leaders, like Superintendent Smith and her leadership team, be able to ask and answer these questions really consistently and rigorously. And as educators, these will look very familiar to you. These are the kinds of questions we ask ourselves every day about our students. Starting with what is it that we're trying to do, getting really clear on what our goals for students are in the district of Brockton. How are we planning to do it? What's our strategy for actually achieving that goal? At any given moment, how are we going to know whether or not we're on track? So being really honest with ourselves about our progress toward those goals. And then finally, having systems and structures in place to problem solve when things aren't quite going as we'd hoped. How do we help folks answer these questions? Well, we use a, an approach, like I said earlier, called delivery. And delivery is broken down into 15 essential elements that we think any system that gets good at these 15 things will be able to implement really well. And so I'm not going to go through too much detail about each of these, but I'm going to give you a bit of an overall sense because in a minute I'm going to share with you the results of where we think Brockton is currently on these 15 elements. So you'll see it appears that this is a, a linear process, and in some cases it is, but uh, for the most part you can jump around and get good at certain parts of this before you get good at others. But uh, we think that starting you have to have a foundation. So you'll see those four elements under developing a foundation are about answering that first question really clearly. What is it that we're trying to do? So getting clear about our aspiration, thinking about where we are right now, building a unit of folks who are focused on implementation. So this is a, what distinguishes us from a lot of other um, approaches to implementation, which is that we believe that there actually should be some core folks who are thinking all the time, not just about the what, but about the how. And then finally, establishing a guiding coalition or a set of people that are there to support you in that delivery of your aspiration no matter what. So when the budget times are tough, uh, when the media isn't quite on your side, having folks who will come to your defense and come to your aid. That second component up there is about data use. This is about really digging in to understand the challenge that's ahead. So the first is just about understanding our past and present performance. And the second is about trying to get at the root causes. What are the drivers of that performance? So where we see some of those bright spots, where things have gone really well, what do we think has been contributing to those? And on the flip side, where we've seen some stagnant progress, where we haven't seen what the results we want, do we understand really what's driving that so that we can develop a plan to address those challenges? Which gets at bucket number three, which is all about answering that second question of delivery. How are we planning to do it? And you all have done a great job here in Brockton of putting together a strategic plan that gets at what those strategies are. And our job is to help think about the implementation of that plan. So under here you'll see we talk about determining a reform strategy. This is a coherent, prioritized set of activities that are going to help us get to that aspiration we've set for students. And then setting some measurable outcome goals, some targets, and year-over-year -year trajectories about what it's going to take to get there. And then finally, producing some delivery plans. These look a little different, I'm going to talk about this in a minute, than a traditional strategic plan in that they're more about implementation, right? They get at the question of what are we going to do, not just, excuse me, how are we going to do it, not just what are we going to do. Fourth here you'll see is all about driving against that plan. So once you've got, you answered the question, what are we trying to do, you figured out how you're going to get there, you need to set up the systems and structures to monitor progress. And we believe the key to that is this idea of routines. Okay, routines are there to help us monitor performance and progress against that plan. Otherwise the plan ends up being a document that sits on the shelf. And the goal here is to make sure that we're actually continuously asking ourselves, how are we doing against that plan? Are we on track to deliver on those goals we've set for students? And those routines help us to do two other things, which is to solve problems early rather than firefighting, which becomes uh, the method of, of choice in many places. And finally, sustaining and building momentum to make sure that those goals for students, the outcomes you're trying to achieve, are always at the forefront of your mind. And you'll see at the bottom here, underlying all of these pieces of delivery is this idea of creating a culture. 
infusing these elements and practices into the daily workings of an organization so that it becomes the way we do business. This is about building the capacity of people to do these different elements of implementation. It's about really strong communication of the message. And finally, it's about the use of these relationships um, that have been developed to really get folks on board with this aspiration and the plan. So on this next slide, you'll see a heat map because we've begun a, an engagement with Brockton. Um, we're privileged to have received a grant through the Gates Foundation to do some work with Brockton um, to think about how to implement the great strategic plan that's been developed here. So to kick off this engagement at the beginning of November, a team of us from EDI came and spent two days conducting what we call a capacity review. And a capacity review is essentially a very rapid audit and snapshot in time of how well Brockton is currently positioned to deliver on its goals for students. And we use that framework of the 15 elements that I just shared with you. It's a two-day process, so it's, it's really quick, um, but it, we get in pretty deep by talking to a number of different stakeholders, both inside and outside the district. And we got the chance to actually speak to a number of you as well um, during that process. And we ask a lot of questions and learn as much as we can about each of these different pieces of the, of the framework. And then on the second day, we conduct a self-assessment with the leadership team, where we ask those folks to reflect on where they think they are with regard to these pieces right now. Um, and then we, we conducted a report out to Superintendent Smith and her leadership team, giving them evidence from those focus groups we conducted and some data that we reviewed to share where we think things are right now. And, and actually, you'll see here, we, we rate on a four-point scale. So we go from red to green, so red, orange, yellow, and then green. And just to give you a bit of context, this is actually quite a rosy picture. Uh, for most of the capacity reviews we conduct, they look a lot redder than this. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities here um, and a lot of areas of strength to build on here in Brockton. Um, and you'll note, too, that when you think about the four-point scale, red does not mean terrible and green does not mean perfect. Um, green can mean that this is a real area of strength. You can always improve, we can always get better, um, but that it's a relative area of strength. And red can mean we just haven't gotten there yet. So you'll note this matches with the slide I just shared with you, but you'll note the areas that are reddest right now um, overall for Brockton are around this idea of setting targets and trajectories. So having a set of outcomes for students that have been articulated with numbers um, and metrics. The plan, the strategic plan has some goals. Our push is to think about whether there are student outcomes associated with those goals that will help you know whether or not you've achieved them. Um, and then of course the idea of producing delivery plans that are based in that strategic plan but that go farther and go beyond into the implementation is another area of focus as well as setting up the routines which ha aren't there yet because the plan just got written um, to actually monitor progress. But you'll also note on the flip side there's a whole lot of green up here. There's some real areas of strength uh, particularly under that last category of sustaining delivery um, and that idea of building a culture, there's some really, really impressive communication work that's gone on as part of the strategic planning process. We heard a lot of folks rallied around the strategic plan, really bought into it, and that presents such a great opportunity when you think about what it's gonna take to actually implement it. Um, and those relationships that have been built as a result are also incredibly strong. So overall, I think the message here is that we really see some areas that are very hard to establish uh, already in a really good place and that we think that with some really focused effort over the next couple of months, we can help move some of these other areas uh, more into the green side of things. And so the capacity review really serves two purposes. It gives Superintendent Smith an idea of where things are, but it also gives us coming into this engagement an idea of where we should help over the next couple of months and where we should focus our time and attention. Um, and so that's why we come out of the capacity review with some recommended first steps. And these are the steps that we hope to work alongside uh, Liz Berry and Superintendent Smith to help these things get established over the next couple of months. And you'll see um, these are related to some of those areas that were redder on the prior slide. So first is about getting really clear about the goals for student outcomes and then figuring out how, where we are on those goals right now and thinking about what underlies that performance. So getting at some of those root causes to then think about what that means for our theory of action going forward. So where things have been going really well, what are they doing? How can we scale that up across the district to impact more students? Where things aren't going as well, what's going wrong? How can we address those challenges? 
Second here, we want to think about prioritizing and sequencing. So the plan, as written, has a lot in it. There's a lot in there. And I think the, that's all really great stuff, but the question is, if you were handed that plan tomorrow, how would you know where to direct your attention right now? And we know that we can't do it all right at once, and we certainly can't do it all at once really, really well, which is what it's going to take to see the kind of outcomes and change that we need. So this next piece is about taking that really strong foundation that's in the strategic plan and helping to prioritize and sequence those strategies um, to really get clear on what it is the district is focused on this year and next year and the year after that. That prioritization will go into that third bullet, which is about the idea of some supporting delivery plans that are going to have clear timelines and benchmarks focused on implementation and owners who are responsible for that strategy, thinking about what's it going to take to get this done and also being held accountable um, by Superintendent Smith and by the school committee members on how well progress toward that strategy is going. That fourth bullet there is about setting up the routines. So this is about putting in place some structures for clear progress monitoring so that folks know where we are on each of these priorities and that we're constantly having an opportunity to problem solve proactively about where things are going off track. Second to last, you'll see we want to think about the guiding coalition, which we heard some really great uh, things about during our capacity review. There's just a lot of really strong feelings right now about of support from the school committee, from the union, um, from teachers, from principals. And so there's a huge opportunity here to think about how can we use some of that political capital to gain, to make some gains in areas that have potentially been challenging in the past. And then finally, getting some really strong mechanisms for problem solving in place, because there's a lot of challenges that come through the door. And being able to have the right mechanisms to prioritize and, and identify what, which of those problems need to be solved first is going to be a really important part of this work. So as a result of our work together over the next couple of months, we're hoping to come out with three main deliverables um, that we will, of course, be sharing with all of you. Um, the first, as I mentioned earlier, is this idea of measurable student outcomes within the strategic plan, um, which we already started working on today, and we're going to share some of our work in progress on that with you in just a minute. Secondly, the idea of some delivery plans or implementation plans that are all about how we're going to get these things done, that outline some key activities and milestones um, and leading indicators that we're going to look to of success. And then finally, establishing a set of progress monitoring routines that will help the city of Brockton uh, understand how well the schools are serving their students um, and that we will build the capacity of someone within Brockton Public Schools to actually run these routines so that we leave this um, with a system in place to make sure that this work keeps going. So as I said, I was here earlier today and got to work with the strategic planning team here at BPS and um, we started with the question of what are we trying to do? We know that there are three big goals outlined in the strategic plan, and our push was to think about where are those goals, uh, what those goals mean in terms of student outcomes. So if five years from now, Superintendent Smith comes out and says, yes, we have achieved instructional excellence here in Brockton, what metrics will she point to? What data will she cite when she says that? And the, that's a tough question, and we didn't get to an answer, um, but you'll see here, this is our work in progress. Um, we use this fancy paper that, uh, that allows you to think and, and work and learn together. Um, and the idea here is that we were starting to see where we had some overlap. We were starting to shift around and see where we were coming, uh, where we were landing in terms of potential indicators of success. And you'll see a lot of things that look familiar around park scores, around graduation rates. Um, and so the next step will be getting narrowing even more and thinking about what it's going to take to get to a clear set of indicators and set some targets for those indicators. Um, the other thing we worked on earlier today is about prioritization. So we took the strategies, excuse me, the strategic initiatives that are in the strategic plan um, under instructional as excellence, and we asked ourselves some tough questions about where is there overlap, where do some of these fit together, um, which of these are going to be the highest impact, um, and we started to really think about a structure and an architecture for what a delivery plan or a set of delivery plans for these different initiatives would look like. And so the, the beginnings of this are, are in place. We'll continue to work on this. Um, I'll have the privilege of continuing to come back and visit um, and conduct some workshops with that team as well as with the superintendent to, get, uh, to continue to support this work over the next couple of months. So um, with that, 
Liz, did you want to add anything? No, I just, um, we, we've had a lot of um, support either in, in person or virtual, and it really has helped, I think, for um, us to think about um, just an actionable prioritized plan that really focuses on student outcomes. Um, sometimes we fall into the trap where we're thinking about adult behaviors and we want adult behaviors to change, but I, I, I just appreciate that that has been the focus and, and really just, um, I wish we had more time today and we'll have more time in the future, but I, I think that um, through the combination of the virtual support as well as the in-person support um, and kind of sharing resources back and forth, um, we, we, we um, will benefit quite a bit from this partnership this year. So I wanted to ask all of you um, if you have any questions for me about the Education Delivery Institute or about this process or about um, our work over the next couple of months with Brockton. Yes? So is the goal of, I guess, your time together mm -hmm. to create the plan? The, the delivery plan. I mean, we're working from that strategic plan. And as Corey said, yeah. you know, we're, we're picking up where things might overlap or duplicate. But then also, um, you know, I often think about how that the strategic plan was, was, was built. There was a lot of consensus and collaboration. So I think that um, it's important as we talk about implementation, how are we involving others in what needs to happen first, what needs to happen next, and what are those student outcomes that, that, that we hold in high regard for that. So it's working from that strategic plan, developing a plan for this year, but a delivery plan from there, as well as um, folks who are responsible for carrying out aspects of that plan. Um, I have said probably um, more than once that the day-to-day -day gets in the way of long-term planning. Um, we, we all fall into that trap. And what I really like about um, this model is this becomes a system of routines. So the, the actual implementation of the plan um, becomes that day-to-day -day that, that, that we honor. So the goal is to finish the plan kind of have all these things identified mm -hmm. and then to be implementing over the next three to five years yep. kind of and and are there kind of check-ins with your organization mm -hmm. I assume you guys want to know That's how a great it question. turned out <laughs> sure yeah and, and actually we um, have a network that we convene at EDI of all of our practitioners that are using <coughs> delivery so um, we bring them to DC a couple of times uh, and ask them to share from each to share and learn from each other and so we continue to um, support even after this grant from, uh, from Gates is, is ended, we'll continue to share resources. Um, and like I said, we'll make sure that before this grant is over, we've helped to set up and build the capacity of folks within the district to continue to execute on those routines that we think are the key to actually making a plan a living, breathing document after, after all that hard work goes into it. So we're basically accountable to ourselves after that. Yeah. things that, that I've talked about and I'd like to see happen in the district um, is the idea of routines. So if that's established where you continue to have people that have ownership of different parts of the strategic plan, they're presenting to the superintendent and our team on a regular basis to make decisions. At the same time, I'm presenting that to you, which was the goal of having that as part of our school committee agenda and to have discussion. And the other thing is, you know, as you change leadership at any given time, if this is in place, if this routine uh, is in place, then they should just be able to pick up, you know, take a look at where the district is, but not have to create another whole strategic plan because you're continuing to look at what's working, what isn't, are we getting there quick enough, you know, do, do things change uh, certainly in the timeline of a strategic plan so it does become a living document. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Yes. Your organization's involvement with um, obviously our district, uh, this isn't, is this a new concept or is this a concept that's been applied to other districts and, and if so, you know, what, what is the track record, how, sure. what are, how the outcomes been? Yeah, that's a great question. So um, I'll share a little bit of our history. So actually, uh, EDI was established about five years ago, um, but we were founded 
using this idea of delivery, which was pioneered by Michael Barber, who was the um, prime minister's delivery unit. Tony Blair established a delivery unit over in the UK. And he was charged with delivering on a number of campaign promises that Tony Blair had made um, around social priorities, everything from getting the trains to run on time to improving literacy rates for six-year-olds across the UK. Um, and so he essentially, in his work, developed this idea of delivery um, and this methodology that, he's then, that he then used to drive that work over in the UK. And we decided a couple of years ago, alongside the Education Trust, which is another nonprofit down in DC, that we could bring that science of, I'll use that word loosely, that science of delivery to education reform in the United States. And so that's when we were founded to help build the capacity of organizations across the US to do that. And so as a result of that, we've developed a number of tools and resources that fit within this approach and this methodology. Um, and we've used it in a number of different places. When we started five years ago, we were predominantly focused on state agencies. Um, so actually, Massachusetts Department of Ed was one of our very first uh, clients or partners here in the US. And so um, we started at the state level, and we've used it at the state level. And there's been a lot of success, a lot of uh, Commissioner Chester's belief in the delivery approach, if you ever ask him about it. Um, it's how he runs his agency. He has regular updates. He has delivery plans um, that, are, that are in place. And he has regular updates on progress. He's established these routines, um, as have a number of successful education leaders at the state level. Um, and then a couple of years ago, we realized that actually this work could be really helpful, not just at the state level, but also at the district and school level. So we have begun using um, delivery. It's been more recent in the past two years in some of the states across the country. I work also in Fayette County Public Schools in Kentucky, um, focused on predominantly with them, their teacher and leader evaluation. They have a new evaluation system that they're putting in place. Um, and they've seen some really exciting growth um, and some exciting feedback about just the the way that that rollout has gone um, in their district. Eagle County, Colorado is another one of our district partners um, that has established delivery plans and a set of routines. They're earlier to the game, so um, we're hopeful that they'll continue to see some results there. But um, a lot of our work, and if you, if you go to our website, you'll see some of our other partners that we work with. But um, our, our work is based, like I said, in, in a methodology that happens somewhere else, but we believe um, and have seen some real significant changes in the way agencies work and do business. And what kind of regularity will you, I guess, be um, involved with our district? How often will you, be, you know, have actual FaceTime, mm -hmm. and then what would, you know, be, I guess, done virtually? Sure. So we are um, in the process of mapping out what the next couple of months looks like in terms of our support. Um, we have a certain, essentially the, the grant comes with a certain amount of money and we have to think about how to leverage that and split it between on the ground time versus virtual time. Um, but essentially the exercise I helped them, the team work through today, um, Liz could then take that exercise and conduct it on, with a similar um, goal, but on a different set of indicators and a different set of outcomes um, in an, at another time. And I can support either virtually or I can provide feedback on that. Um, but if, over the next six months, my guess is I'll make probably about four trips up here um, for day long or two day long workshops with the team. And then monthly, uh, or excuse me, in between those monthly visits, there'll be some um, calls and check-ins with Liz and with her team to do some virtual support as well, um, and also access to a bunch of the resources that we have um, for through our learning community for all of our partners. So there's an online resource library that I'll also be sharing and um, supporting virtually. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I want to thank Corey. I know you're trying to catch a flight uh, back to Washington, <laughs> D.C. I wish you could stay for our show. I know you I wanted know, to I'm do that. Sad. So, again, please, we'll have you come back again, and we'll continue to, to update the school committee. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Really appreciate your time. And thank you to our uh, Department of Elementary and Secondary Education, who continues to support us uh, in these efforts, brought them as chosen uh, mm -hmm. for this project, and we're pleased to move forward with it. Um, I, I just, I know we're trying to run to get to the concert, many of us. Um, I did want to thank everybody who on December 8th attended the charter school hearing here in Brockton. Uh, certainly our school committee, our city council, our mayor, um, teachers, parents, uh, students. Unfortunately, not everybody had an opportunity to speak on both sides. Um, I felt it was fair. Um, people got to, you know, share their concerns, uh, their support, uh, their opposition. 
Um, we continue to make sure that we have a presence in Fitchburg. Our deputy superintendent and uh, chief budget officer were present uh, last Thursday evening. I'm attending with another uh, number of community members, uh, different uh, teachers, department heads, et cetera, tomorrow in Salem. So we'll continue to uh, work on our uh, rebuttal. Uh, we're again reviewing this application and uh, we will share that with you. And uh, items to refer to subcommittee. We had talked about the uh, finances uh, after the holidays. Uh, I know we're also looking to, um, I, I want to thank everybody that attended the retreat, a very successful retreat. And we <coughs> talked about the superintendent goal setting also. For, so maybe we can do that the same night. All right, and uh, under new business, we do have the report of the school committee retreat. I guess, Tom, we're looking just for a motion to accept the report. Or? I guess I'll just summarize a couple of things. Okay, we um, School committee met on December 6th for a retreat. At that retreat, we had a, an update with respect to uh, the charter school situation from the superintendent. Uh, Dorothy Presser from MASC provided us with a, um, a nice summer, summary and overview of uh, the superintendent evaluation process. Uh, Michelle Connors did a great job with Baseline Edge showing us and um, some of us who are less inclined to the new ways of technology. Um, she helped us through that uh, process. Andy is just a, uh, an, an expert at it, but he's good. Um, yeah, it is, yeah. Uh, Aldo, Mr. Petronio gave us a nice update with respect to the budget. Um, and at that time, the superintendent uh, suggested um, a cost saving measure where we're spending more money uh, currently with respect to custodial services and she thought that it would be a more effective cost uh, cutting measure to bring back one custodian um, and then we also had an update uh, from the collaboration going on with respect to um, the um, district capacity project on um, the um, programs uh, surrounding our potential Portuguese expansion and uh, French Creole expansion, um, and that's still you know in the works. But it was a it was a great update, and then the superintendent closed with uh, updating with respect to more emergency information, our emergency forms, um, the transient population really needs to um, need some attention with respect to making sure we have accurate data on file. Um, so that was the report. So I would um, make a motion to accept the minutes and the, um, accept the minutes of the December 6th retreat. Second. Okay, at 659, we have a motion and properly seconded. Uh, all in favor? And, and then uh, on that, within that report, um, a motion to allow the superintendent to bring back an additional custodian as it uh, amounts to a cost savings measure overall as compared to what we're currently spending, I guess, in overtime. Second. Okay, motion's been made and properly seconded. On the motion, anyone? All in favor? Opposed, passes unanimously. That's it for Anyone that. else under new business? I just want superintendent? to mention the National Honor Society. Oh, yeah. uh, we attended last Thursday. Um, I don't know the exact number of inductees. It was, uh, 90, again, wonderful ceremony. Um, congratulations. 90. We have parents in the audience whose children were inducted. It was just a, a great occasion and, again, highlights the good work going on with our students, our teachers, our staff at Brockton High School. I also want to inform you that um, John Kelly, uh, the assistant principal at the Downey, has been presently named the interim principal for the rest of this year. That allows us to uh, advertise his job and we're looking for an interim assistant principal. Um, I met with John um, and he, he's agreed to do the work and uh, I'll keep you updated. We will post that as it gets closer to the spring for a full-time principal at the Downey. And the only other thing is the annual uh, technology conference. I just want to give you a heads up. I know many of you attend this. It's going to be uh, at the Baker School on the 10th of January. Uh, more information will follow. It's 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. And I'm looking at this with no date, but I'm thinking it is January 10th. <laughs> so again, there'll be more information in your packet. Um, again, as we close, I, I know we're trying to run to the holiday concert. Uh, I want to wish everyone uh, happy holidays, uh, Merry Christmas. 
whatever you celebrate this time of year. It's very heartening to see the things going on in the schools, the giving, the children, um, the adults. It's a time when we all come together. Uh, again, as your superintendent, I want to thank the school committee for their continued support, support of the district and all of the initiatives happening. I know how hard we have worked you uh, this past year, a lot of time uh, on many, many committees, et cetera. So I wish you time with your families and friends to, to kind of relax and, and re-energize and enjoy. Uh, Merry yeah. Christmas. Yeah. Well, Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Uh, I think no many meeting, of us. No meeting Christmas Eve. Yeah. Uh, no meeting this year on Christmas Eve. Thank you. Just, just the executive team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, in, in, the, in the spirit of the season, many of us would like to get down the hall to see a great Christmas concert. Uh, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion's been made and seconded. All in favor? Meeting's adjourned. Thank you very much. Happy holidays, everyone.